Ah, good afternoon, good afternoon, KCAA listeners, and good afternoon and good evening to those listening to us on the live stream link. This is the Kathleen Wells Show. I'm your host, Kathleen, and we have a fantastic show prepared for you today. I'm delighted to have my guest, Ernie Gallo, who is a U.S. U.S. U.S.S. Ooh, I'm tongue-tied, sorry. U.S.S. Liberty Survivor. He's a Navy veteran and a survivor of the attack on the U.S.S. Liberty. Mr. Gallo is a former CTM2 and a survivor of the June 8th, 1967 deliberate and vicious Israeli attack on the USS Liberty. The USS Liberty was the most decorated Navy ship since World War II. It received the Presidential Unit Citation and 246 additional medals, including the Medal of Honor to their skipper, skipper Captain William McGonagall. The incident killed 34 Americans and wounded 174. There's irrefutable proof that Israel knew that this intelligence ship was a U.S. ship before and during the attack in international waters. So I'd like to welcome my guest, Mr. Gallo. Hello, Mr. Gallo. Hi, Kathleen. Well, I'm delighted to have you. I'm delighted to have you. And my first question to you is I'd like to ask you to actually set the stage, set the scene for listeners so they have a sense, so they have an idea what was actually taking place on the USS Liberty where you were a crew member, what was actually taking place, what was the weather like, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, we... we the ship arrived off of the Sinai coast um, the morning of June 8, 1957, and it was a beautiful, sunny day, um, not a cloud in the sky. And um, um, the USS Liberty is an intelligence ship, and our mission was to um, intercept anything and everything in the, in the ether, uh, and that included uh, uh, Egyptian, Israeli, uh, Jordanian, Syrian, uh, any of the countries involved in that we could possibly uh, intercept, especially aircraft, uh, if there were any. Uh, as uh, history will indicate that, there, that Israel had taken out the air forces of Egypt, Syria, and Jordan uh, by June 8th so that they had complete air supremacy. So... Uh, those aircraft would not be a problem. Um, so our, our duty was to make sure that um, uh, that everybody was doing what they should be doing, and that is um, uh, should an Egyptian aircraft fly, fly by and we intercepted a Russian pilot, uh, that would have been a, a tremendous problem. But as I said, uh, that wasn't the case. Um, but what was happening was uh, the Israelis were moving troops from the Sinai to the Syrian coast because they hadn't taken the Golan Heights. So the USS Liberty was now an impediment to their war plan. Um, the, um, uh, the secrecy had to be uh, the, at the top of their, their top of their mind, and um, uh, if word would have got at, gotten out that the Israelis had taken their troops out of the Sinai, or most of them, uh, Egypt could have counterattacked and taken the Sinai back. So um, uh, I guess the Israelis felt that, uh, they, that they did not want us to, to be in place. They did ask us to move uh, that morning through uh, uh through diplomatic channels, and unfortunately, the message to tell us to move just never came. Um, we were under surveillance the entire morning by Israeli aircraft. We had 12 overflights that morning, so the Israelis absolutely knew who we were. We were flying the American flag, of course, and we were a very unique ship in that um, this was a World War II cargo ship with, uh, that was converted into an intelligence ship, uh, which meant there was something like 40-some antennas uh, from stem to stern. Very different-looking ship with a very large uh, uh, aft of a 
midships. And um, the Israelis, uh, uh, as I said, we had 12 overflights that morning, and uh, they were very friendly. The pilots uh, would, w would wiggle their wings uh, and said to say hello. We felt very comfortable that uh, our ally was keeping an eye on us. So much so that uh, uh, some of the guys relaxed a little bit uh, uh, when they weren't on watch by sunbathing. So uh, I just want to paint a mental picture of what the Israeli pilots might have seen. Uh, guys all over the ship in either uh, on towels or, or uh, uh, beach chairs sunning themselves. Uh, in other words, we were not an offensive looking or a man of war. Far from it. Um, at about two o'clock, the Israelis decided that enough was enough, and they started the attack. So, I did I cover enough? <laughs> yeah, I think you've set the picture, you've set the stage very well. So now let's go into the attack. What was? Give us specifics about the attack. Well, uh, the attack was in three phases. Uh, started about two two p.m local time, and um, um, three Mirage uh, jets came out of the, out of the sun, uh, and they immediately start rocketing and machine gunning the ship. Um, the focus was to make sure that um, we had, we had two uh, 40, excuse me, we had two 50 caliber machine guns <coughs> that were uh, uh, which were pea, shoot, pea shooters to the to the jet, and uh, they were manned because our captain was concerned about uh, repel border situation, and um, the jets immediately killed the four crewmen that were uh, manning the machine guns, and um, they started to uh, uh, take out uh, communications antennas as best they could. Um, and they did a very good job. Um, we we were out of communications. They were jamming our distress frequency so we could not communicate with the Sixth Fleet. And um, uh, so that's, that, that started it. And uh, they came at, at pass after pass, just strafing the ship and uh, putting rockets uh, wherever they could. Uh, anyone that moved on the ship uh, immediately got a rocket. Uh, fired at them. Um, the um, the next phase were um, two Mustier uh, jets that dropped napalm bombs uh, port and starboard. So now the the outside of the ship was in flames, and our guys did a terrific job of fighting those fires and putting them out. Um, and um, to add to the to the serious situation, we had a 55-gallon drum of gasoline that exploded once the, of course, once the fire, the fire engulfed the, the drum, and um, um, it was chaotic. Very, if you can imagine, just absolute chaos. Uh, and and anybody um, that uh, tried to rescue someone was immediately shot at by the plane. Um, and the next phase were three torpedo boats. And this, um, the, now the planes that attacked did not have any markings, so we did not know who was attacking them. And uh, but when three torpedo torpedo boats showed up, they were flying Israeli flags. And uh, they, I, I guess, they had 40 millimeter weapons on board, and um, they. Uh, and also 50 caliber machine guns, um, and continue to strafe the ship. And then they start dropping torpedoes in the water. Um, these were dumb torpedoes in that uh, uh, our captain could see the torpedo boat setting up for a run, and he would drop a torpedo in the water, and it just the torpedo would go wherever it was pointed when it hit the water. So our captain was ma managed to dodge four of the torpedoes, but the fifth torpedo um, did hit, hit our ship, and that killed uh, 24 of the 34 that were killed that day. Um, the um, the ship did 
not think. Um, it was a miraculous. The, 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 fact, the fact that the ship did not sink, the fact that the torpedo hit in the only only at the only place on the ship that could have uh, taken the explosion, and the inner bulkhead held so that the water was contained, and um, it didn't. The ship did not break apart. And we we um, we were still afloat. We were listing nine degrees, but um, nevertheless, our captain um, gave the order to prepare to abandon ship. But once he realized that the ship was not going to sink, and we had so many wounded, we had 174 wounded, um, that they would have not never survived in the water. Uh, the Israelis uh, machine gunned our life rafts, uh, our inflatable life rafts, so they were useless, which was a which, which is a, a, a war crime um, in itself. Um, they did not want anybody to survive this attack. Um, the the uh, the last phase was uh, were, were helicopters with Marines on board. Um, however, by that time, the Israelis must have realized uh, or thought that help was on its way and um, uh, that, the, that the ship was surviving their attack and uh, decided that it was it would be best for them to pull away, and mm -hmm. they did. Mm -hmm. um, the... Uh, some of the wounded were very, very serious, and we had an excellent doctor on board, Dr. Kiefer, who did some amazing operations that night and uh, managed to keep um, a few of them alive. Um, the carnage was terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, but the, the Israelis tried as hard as they could to, to, uh, to sink the ship to make and to ensure that nobody lived. Um, but uh, that that did not happen, and I'm here to talk about it. And you're here to talk about it, and we're talking about the incident that occurred on June 8, 1967, an uh, attack on the ship of the USS Liberty by the Israelis, and we're speaking with Ernie Gallo. He was, what, let me ask you, Mr. Gallo, what is, a C, what is the rank CTM2? What is that rank? Um, the... The CT stands for communications technician, and in, in those days, uh, the, the National Security Agency (NSA) um, had um, what's called security group personnel in each of the armed services. Um, <clears throat> and the, the group in the Navy were called communication technicians. So we we were we were Navy, but we indirectly uh, worked for for NSA. Uh, they, the NSA told the Navy where they needed uh, needed an operation and, and we would fulfill that mission. Uh, the M stands for maintenance. I was, a, I was a, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I was like an electronic technician that, uh, uh, that I had the clearances so that uh, I, I would work with the, the CTs. And the, and so the CT's mission on the USS Liberty basically was, was for, to, to intercept. So I want to ask you a question. What is your response to the fact that the official report is that the Israelis, that it was an accident and they didn't know that they had uh, uh, fired on an American ship? I think that's the official story. Yeah, uh, and that was um, supported by the Navy Court of Inquiry, which was a sham. It was a setup. It was an, an order that came from the White House to the Navy that they were to uh, whatever whatever the Navy Court of Inquiry determined. Uh, they, 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 the bottom line was it, it was going to they, they were going to uh, uh, prepare a report. That indicated that the Israeli attack was accidental. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, that was the that was that that has been to me one of the biggest disappointments as an American as a as a serviceman that um, our government would join with a foreign government to lie about a situation <coughs> that uh, we were sacrificed so that the America could protect its relationship with Israel. And specifically, how did you feel and how did other survivors feel when you learned that LBJ Johnson, President Johnson and McNamara had ordered jets from the Sixth Fleet to send to defend you? They ordered that those jets be turned back. How did you feel about How did you and other survivors feel about learning that information? Oh, absolutely terrible. We, we did not find, we did not know that until we met at our 20th reunion. When, uh, when that information was disclosed, um, Admiral Geis had asked our, our, our uh, CT uh, senior officer, um, Dave Lewis, Commander Dave Lewis, uh, not to say anything until his death. And, and uh, Dave kept his promise to Admiral Geis, and that was not to tell that story, <clears throat> that the there were two uh, two different uh, circ two different events. Planes were launched from the Saratoga and the USS America. <coughs> Excuse me. The, that that the planes um, after they left the ship's left sh the, the the ship's deck, the planes were recalled. The first time it was by uh, by McNamara. And the Sixth Fleet did not know who was attacking us. It could have been Soviet. So um, Admiral Geis was beside himself that uh, he was being told to stand down from helping us. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we, we did not manage to get an SOS out, a May Day out. Um, and um, uh, they, could hear, they could hear the attack. And the screams and the, and the cry for help. So Admiral Geis made sure that the planes that were going to come to our aid were conventionally armed and launched again. And this time he challenged the order, uh, indicating that uh, the U.S. Navy ship is under attack and uh, the planes were conventionally armed. So therefore, um, you know, there, there should be nothing wrong. Well, this time, President Johnson. Um, I guess get, got on the circuit and said, return those planes uh, to the decks. Um, and uh, he must have known it was the Israelis because he said, uh, and we've confirmed this, that I will not have my ally embarrassed. I don't care if that ship sinks. So um, um, I don't know what his problem was, but he uh, basically uh, – thought it was okay for the Israelis to sink the USS Liberty and that we were doing our job as requested um, as best we could. This is an amazing story. Let me ask you, once you were rescued, how were you rescued? And once you returned to the States, how were you treated? Um, the, there were two destroyers that were sent to us uh, from the 6th Fleet on um, the uh, uh, we rendezvoused the next morning uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, and thank God the inner bulkhead did not give way. Otherwise, the destroyers would have been looking for debris and bodies um, uh, versus finding us intact. In and um, um, they did everything they could possibly. I mean, they, 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 they steamed at flank speed to get to us, and um, then the, the USS America uh, and the Saratoga, uh, well, I, uh, I'm going to say the USS America uh, came on, came out of the horizon at about 11 o'clock in the morning, and they start, started sending their helicopters over to pick up all, all of our wounded, and keeping in mind, we had something like 174 wounded, so it was 
quite a feat of um, these helicopters coming one after the other. Um, and, and that part of it, you know, was, was uh, uh, a morale booster because uh, this, was, uh, this was a tremendous show of, uh, of, of Americana uh, getting, getting medical help to us uh, and uh, getting our, our, our wounded guys off the ship and, and to, uh, to the very, various hospitals on the USS America and, and um, other ships in, in the area. Um, <clears throat> when we arrived back in the, the, the CTs, well, let me back up a minute, sorry. Um, we, the, we had to stay on board the ship. Uh, we had a sail to Malta and, and to dry dock. And um, keeping in mind that the CTs are given uh, high clearances and um, the, the torpedo uh, that, that we took uh, opened up our compartment where all our classified equipment and material uh, was, was located so that uh, after the water was drained from the ship, uh, we had to re re recover the, the bodies that were there and uh, collect all of the classified uh, material that was there. And that, so that job was given to the CT. Um, that was more horrific for me than the attack because uh, uh, you, can't, you just can't imagine the, the, uh, uh, the event in, in uh, attempting to pick up anything and everything where the, the decks were coated with uh, uh, black oil and um, um, body parts and, and uh, uh, whatever. Um, and it was precarious because um, the decks were, bulk, were buckled and uh, um, it, was, it was still very dangerous. Anyway, um, we, we accomplished our mission. We, we, we cleaned the spaces out and um, um, then we were given orders to return to the States. Um, the uh, they were pretty. The Navy was pretty smart about it because the orders that came through, no, no, no two of us were assigned to the same place. So I guess we couldn't talk to each other, and and we were given orders never to talk about the incident, the incident even to our family. So <clears throat> uh, the Navy went through pain. But why would they give you that order to never talk about the incident? Because the crew were eyewitnesses to the fact that the Israelis deliberately attacked the ship, and the White House was going to play this, that it was an accident. And, uh, the, you know, uh, they were, they were, it was, the, this was a terrible mistake in identity. Uh, they apologized and, and um, so on and so forth. But, um, um, you know, <clears throat> um, the Johnson administration wanted to make sure that, uh, that, that uh, the Israelis uh, were protected. Um, and we, in other words, we, we knew this was not true. And um, so with the, with the gag order in mind, and, and in other words, we were being threatened with 10 years imprisonment, $10,000 fine, or both. And uh, uh, we went about our lives um, not talking about what happened? Um, and then uh, James Ennis, who was my division officer, uh, com Lieutenant Commander uh, Ennis, uh, actually wrote a book called Assault on the Liberty. And, uh, well, with that in print, um, we kind of relaxed and said, hey, I guess it's time we can start talking about it. He, he published a book. And uh, the uh, Guys start to call each other, get in contact with each other, and we start to have reunions. And um, and, and uh, we reestablish re our friendships and our uh, camaraderie, and it's been wonderful as far as that's concerned. Uh, but in addition to that, we started to compare notes and to and to find out the skullduggery that went on um, to keep us quiet and to keep uh, the, the situation from 
from looking bad as far as the Israelis were concerned. Now, when did when did Mr. Ennis write his publish his book? What year was that? I believe it was 1979. Mm, so some of, what, 13 years later. Now, I know that there was an investigation by John McCain's father, Admiral McCain. Talk to me about that investigation. Well, that was the Navy Court of Inquiry. Uh, Admiral Kidd and uh, the, the uh, legal counselor uh, was the Captain Ward Boston. Uh, they came to the ship and uh, conducted a Navy Court of Inquiry. Um, they were supposedly to take... Uh, testimony from the guys uh, as to what happened and uh, collect information and uh, as any Navy Court of Inquiry. But Navy Court of Inquiry usually take months, and they were only given weeks to complete. So they, uh, in fact, they began to realize that they needed to talk to the Israelis. And the word came from the White House, you will not talk to the Israelis. You will get this you will wrap this thing up really quick. So um, Admiral McCain, Jr., uh, uh, the father of Senator McCain, uh, was in London, and he was, his responsible, responsibility was of, uh, for uh, all of the uh, United States Navy forces uh, in Europe, and, uh, um, and that covered the Sixth Fleet. And uh, so anything that happened had to go through, had to go through him. Uh, so the report then went to London, where he was located, and um, um, there was another outstanding Navy officer that I'm very proud to have known who just passed away, and his name was uh, Rear Admiral Merlin Starr. He was a captain at the time, and he was uh, Admiral McCain's legal counsel. So this uh, Navy Court of Inquiry was prepared, and... Uh, it had to be reviewed by um, Admiral Starring, uh, Cap Captain Starring at the time, and um, he immediately started, and, and, and time was of the essence, so they were really rushing him to, to get it done. Uh, and he worked through the night uh, to, to do it, and um, the next day they checked on him to see where he was at, and he said, uh, he says, I'm having trouble with this report because uh, I cannot... Uh, uh, the, the, the evidence does not uh, uh, prove your, 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 the resultant uh, uh, comment. Uh, uh, and um, so he, and he was making extensive notes. Well, they went back and told Admiral Kidd and Admiral McCain, and they immediately had the report taken from Admiral uh, Captain Starring. And which was he thought was very peculiar, and I guess Admiral uh, McCain signed off on it anyway, and uh, off it went to the White House. But the White House was still not finished with it because um, uh, Captain Ward Boston told us later that it was uh, once it once it got back to the states, it was reviewed by two White House attorneys, and they continued to change it. And to, as I said, it was a, a complete farce so that the report would support the Israelis' claim that it was an accident. Um, that this, this document is still the document that the, that, that the government uses to hang over our heads to say, you know, you guys were wrong, this was an accident, as the Navy Court of Inquiry indicates. What a travesty of injustice. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and and perpetrated at the highest levels of our government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an indictment on our government. Well, how do you feel about taking phone calls? Are you are you open to taking questions and comments? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Can okay. I say one thing about uh, about this uh, situation? Yes. Uh, before we do. Yeah. Um, I I have just completed a book. And um, it's going to be available in about another month. And the title of it is called Liberty and Justices, a Survivor's Account of American Bigotry. And it's, it's documenting what we've been through these last 46 years. And uh, simply because 
with uh, the, our government indicating that it, was, that, that it was an accident, and we say, no, it wasn't, that we're considered anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and the rest, and, and, and all that entails. And all that entails. Okay, we're going to take a break right now, and I want to open up the phone line if there are any listeners out there that have any questions or comments for Ernie Gallo, Mr. Gallo, regarding, who is a survivor of the attack June 8, 1967, by the Israelis on the USS Liberty ship. June 8, 1967, attack by Israelis on the USS Liberty. We're speaking to Mr. Gallo, who is a survivor of that incident, and he has a book out. Hey, if you'd like to make a phone, if you'd like to call us with questions or comments, please feel free to do so. That toll-free number is one triple eight nine zero nine ten fifty, and we'll be right back. Ah, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is KCAA. Welcome. And I'm Kathleen Wells, and my guest is Ernie, Ernie Gallo, who was a survivor of USS Liberty, which was attacked by Israel on June 8, 1967. He's giving us all the details. If, you, if, if any listeners out there would like to call in with questions or comments for Mr. Gallo, feel free to do so. The number is 888 So, Mr. Gallo, you were just telling us that John McCain's father, Admiral McCain had conducted an investigation which he washed, whitewashed. So give us your thoughts about the fact that John McCain has been silent about this incident. Well, he's ex-Navy, and um, uh, he should understand where we're coming from. I mean, the, the U.S.'s Liberty is the most decorated ship for a single engagement ever. Um, and... Um, uh, the, uh, I would imagine he, I would think, since he, especially as being a prisoner of war, he should have some feelings towards what we've experienced. But uh, I guess it's more important uh, to to protect um, his father's involvement in this. Um, and I don't, I can't see where that's a problem because he was probably following orders from the White House. Um, you know, as, as, especially at, 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 at that level, when the president says, you know, jump, you say how high. Um, so it's, um, 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 I don't know, I don't, I, I, it's hard for me to understand his attitude. However, when you look at his voting, voting, uh, right, voting, uh, uh, record, record over the years, mm -hmm. It's obvious to me uh, that he is another one of these congressmen that uh, are in the uh, that some somehow um, blindly support Israel, and uh, Israel can do anything they want, break international law or whatever, and and get away with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, he's a supporter. He's a blind supporter. They can't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, most politicians are blind supporters. I remember Netanyahu coming and speaking recently last year before both houses of Congress and receiving multiple standing ovations from both sides of the aisle. So it's like unprecedented support in Congress for Israel. Yeah, one has to wonder uh, how a situation has gotten this way. I mean... I'm a firm believer in our system of government. I love this country dear, dearly and what it stands for. Um, God gave our founding fathers grace to, to, to come up with a plan to, to give humanity uh, the most humane form of government to date. And, and it's been successful. And, and, and because of that, we have checks and balances. And it works because of the checks and balances. With our tripartite form of government, the Congress is supposed to be the mouthpiece of the American public. And to me, that has been coerced uh, somehow. And, and I don't, I, you know, I, um, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but but what's happened to our Congress? Why? Um, um, there were congressmen that, that at the time, seven, knew that the attack was also deliberate, 
and um, uh, they uh, they did everything they could to get uh, to investigate the USS Liberty, and uh, could not get the the rest of Congress to go along with them. Uh, and that's another issue we have with our government, in that there's a there is a constitutional mandate that indicates that that says that, and this goes back to the piracy days, that when a ship is attacked in peacetime, uh, a Navy ship is attacked in peacetime, they are to investigate. And they had every incident except for one, the U.S.'s liberty. They're hiding behind their desks. So, I, and I plead with America, please ask yourself why. Why has Congress abdicated their responsibility when it involves Israel? What is going on? What is going on? But it's not only in our government, in our politics, but it's also in our press, in our media. Touch on that. Yeah, um, we uh, we've had some instances where um, I want to. There, there was one very good example. Uh, Nightline came to one of our reunions. And they taped the reunion. They were, going to, uh, they were developing a show, and uh, they held uh, interviews with uh, some of the crew. And um, they were very excited. The crew that was there was very excited about what they were doing and what, what they were seeing and what they were hearing. But uh, when they got that tape home, <laughs> I guess uh, their handlers or their supervisors said there's no way that that's going to air. So, um, yeah, political correctness in our country right now is such, and that affects the crew of the USS Liberty, uh, so much so that the Navy can't name a new ship USS Liberty uh, for the criticism and the offense that we might be offensive to some people. Just the name, USS Liberty. Just the name? The, the word liberty that's supposed to to, to connotate patriotism and Americana, and it's an embarrassment in, in the halls of the Pentagon. Isn't that crazy? It, yeah, that's crazy. So what have you learned? What is the lesson that you have taken from this? Uh, I, as I said, I love this country, and I want to see it. I want to. I want to see it survive. If Congress abdicates its responsibility. Um, they, then we're in trouble. We're in real trouble. Um, if Israel can do whatever it wants, and we will continue to fund and provide all the military assistance they need and, and all the wherewithal for them to continue thumbing their nose at the rest of the world and, and so that they can continue their, their, their apartheid with the Palestinians, um, we're going to get ourselves in real trouble. Uh, I mean, as I said, the systems of checks and balances. Uh, a good example of that was, uh, I, and I have to tell you, I'm a Ron Paul Republican, and uh, what the Republican Party did to Ron Paul was atrocious. But if you listen to what Ron Paul was saying, and I know everybody is saying he's crazy, but what he was saying is, was very accurate. Um, and, and we should remove all of our troops from the Middle East. And we should tell the Israelis, no uncertain terms, make peace with the Palestinians and, and, and live with it. Live with them. They're, they're, you know, you have to do that. And uh, live with your neighbors and make peace. And, uh, and we're out of it. We're out of it. So uh, um, my fear, my fear is that if we keep... Uh, causing problems the, the fanatical Islamics uh, for one country, for one for one Pakistan may fall to the fanatical Islamics and they have nuclear weapons and they're crazy enough to use them against Israel and if we say that Israel's security is ours what's next mm -hmm. so this Congress has got to gotten, uh, I must get involved. When we've been, we were talking about attacking Iran for the longest time, um, and I hope that's a dead issue, but, you know, everybody was ignoring the fact 
that the Russians were saying, we're going to support the Iranians. Um, do we, 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 we start the Cold War up again? Um, I hate, would hate to think that all of that's going to come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's going to be very costly. Uh, just think of all the money we would save if we, get, we, we bring all our soldiers, uh, all of our military, out of the Middle East. Now, don't get me wrong. I still belong, believe in, in Teddy Roosevelt's axiom, carry, uh, uh, walk softly and carry a big stick. Matter of fact, walk softly and carry a very big stick. And believe me, we have the technology to do that. I'm very involved. And i got to tell you, these Arleigh Burke destroyers are awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, how many survivors are left? I'm just thinking of how to respond to what you said about walk softly and carry a big stick. I, rem- I know that quote, but... I'm not sure I know what it entails exactly because it seems like it entails a lot of intervention and invasion and uh, involvement in war. No, no, not 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 at all. I mean, that's not. What I, I'm sorry if I implied otherwise. Uh-huh. No, don't belong in other people's affairs. Uh-huh. You need to stay out of their affairs. Uh-huh. You don't belong. If if the country wants to go, wants to become, um, a, 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 wants to live under. Shahara law, that's their decision, not ours. And we should stay out of it. Oh, um, so, if, if, carry, yeah, carry a big stick means that just you have the power, but you don't use it. Is that right? Uh, or use it defensively. In other words, anybody, everybody knows that if you, if you attack one of our diplomatic uh, embassies or one of our embassies or consulates or you take American lives uh, there, that uh, we're going to look for the bad guys and we're going to take them out. Um, uh, in other words, you know, uh, we, but stay out of their affairs. Um, and, uh, um, you know, we, we have the technology uh, to be able to, uh, uh, let's say, well, where I'm coming, what I'm leading towards is this, use the same concept that we used with the Soviet Union. It's called containment. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the, the Islamics are resurrecting themselves, and if we ever want to see another Ottoman Empire again, uh, we better contain them and, um, and contain them fast. But we also should listen to what they're telling us and, and respect um, the Islamic faith. Um, those countries that want to live under Islamic, the Islamic faith, that's up to them, we, and we should stay out of it. Um, and Israel needs to make peace with Palestine, and Palestinians should have should live in peace with the Israelis side by side, and, and uh, um, with a mutual coexistence, not apartheid. <clears throat> um, and we, sh- we we need to be out of that militarily out of that that area. Mm-hmm. But to let the Islamics know, if you attack another country that 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 has no intention of, uh, that do not, does not want to live under Islamic law, uh, rules, or whatever, uh, that we're going to support them. So let me ask you, how, what is the likelihood, what do you think is the likelihood that a real investigation will go on regarding the USS Liberty, will take place? What's the, uh, what do you feel that that will actually happen? Congress is going to do that. I wish they would. I would, uh, I would. We have the evidence to prove, in no uncertain terms, in a court of law, that criminal acts, that, that there were, inter- that uh, war crimes were committed by the Israelis, that, um, that we have all the evidence we can possibly present, I mean, that we can present in a court of law, to prove that it was a deliberate attack. Now, if we could do that in public, then then whatever whatever apologies that were given by the Israelis and reparations that were made at the time is null and void because it was based on their lie. And that that needs, in other words, the Israelis need to come clean. You know, and so. Um, Will that ever happen? Uh, the way things are going right now, 
uh, it doesn't look like it, but I, I, I would, uh, well, uh, if I could make this point, the, the VFW just had a convention, and I'm told that uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the resolutions that were passed was for Congress to investigate the USS Liberty. Oh, really? Uh, yes, yes, and it's not the first time either. There's been pe previous conventions where they passed that, which meant they made a request to Congress to do that. Um, even Co Senator Conyers, uh, I believe from New York, uh, it put it had the um, details of uh, Admiral Moore's commission um, of the US attack on the USS Liberty uh, put in the uh, congressional record, and they they still ignored it. Um, and I, I I would like to think. That more and more and more Americans are finding out about the, our story mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, realize that, hey, these guys, after 46 years, have dug their heels in to make sure that the rest of America hears the truth about what happened to them, that they must have, they, that this is important, and, and uh, that we're not giving up. And I hope our children don't give up either. Right. Well, tell me, how many survivors are, are still with us? Um, I believe we have about uh, 90 active survivors. And there, there were some that, that, that decided that they, they, they walked away from this, uh, given orders never to talk about it, and, and that's it. They, they want to forget it. Um, I think almost every one of us, has had PTSD in some some form or another, and uh, and it, it's a very personal thing how you handle this kind of um, uh, incident, uh, you know. And um, um, some uh, some have gotten medical help, and thank God that that they were able to be treated. Um, and. Uh, no one's going up into a clock tower with a weapon to, you know, prove the point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'd like to help you uh, get this information out, Mr. Gallo. So we have, what, maybe, what, two more minutes, three more minutes left? So, Mr. Gallo, why don't you give, what is the message that you'd like to give to the American people regarding the USS Liberty? Do your own research and go to USSLiberty.com, USSLibertyVeterans.com.org, and and and, and uh, Jim Ennis's book, Assault on the Liberty, and there's, uh, and there's other books out there about the USS Liberty, and look into it. Look into it because this is very important for our future, and and uh, it is. And the key here is that we realize what's going on in Congress, and the to get Congress to understand that we also know what's going on and that this situation has to stop and change but to, to do the right thing. That's all, you know, that, that's my plea that we do the right thing for the American public. We do the right thing for the American public and also give out the name of your book, your upcoming book. Liberty and Justices, a survivor's account of American bigotry. Uh, survivor's account of American bigotry, and who is publishing that? Where can people find it? Well, I imagine it's going to appear in, uh, in Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble. All the all the book, uh, the the e-books or um, the uh, uh, internet book company, mm -hmm. and the publisher is. Um, um, I'm sorry. Clearview Press. Clearview. Clearview yeah. Press. You know, and I, you know, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Just we have what one more minute. I know that you are a member of the, uh, let's see, what is it, the Saint Augustine Navy League. Do you want to just briefly tell, go over the problem that you had with that, the the situation regarding the Saint Augustine Navy League? I'm no longer a member of the Saint. No longer a member of the Navy League. Uh, I am um, with the Daytona Beach Navy League because I was uh, I was kicked out of the St. Augustine Navy League 
because I refused to lie about the attack. We had an, a, new, a new president at the time that decided that he was, uh, did not want to hear anything I had to say, um, and uh, it was offensive to him that I would, I would say anything against our, our good ally, Israel, and um, um, I, was, uh, I was kicked out. You were kicked out. Well, Mr. Gallo, I'm very delighted to have you as a guest. You're always welcome on the Kathleen Wells Show. I'd like to talk to you about how we can get this information out even more, broader, more information out to more people. So I thank you. You're always welcome. Thank you, Mr. Gallo. This is the Kathleen Wells Show. We had as my guest Mr. Ernest, Ernie Gallo, who is a survivor of the USS Liberty. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.